lab 13 putting it all together the goal of this lab exercise is to create a structural model which will assemble the complete alarm clock from the components we have already designed it also uses some technology specific components such as debounce debounce toggle and lcd driver this is the block diagram the alarm clock is controlled by the push buttons. The debounce component synchronizes these button inputs into the design clock and debounces the signal making the input switch clean without any glitches or multiple transitions. The debounce toggle converts a push button input into a toggle. This is used with alarm on input to turn the alarm on and off. The glitch-free output of the debouncer is fed into control FSM which will generate a set of control signals to control the alarm components. The time count component implements the time count mechanism by counting the number of 1 minute pulses generated by the pulse generator. It can also load the time with the new value given out by the time set component when load underscore t is high. The alarm register stores the alarm value. It can also load a new alarm value given by the time set component when load underscore a is high. The time set component enables the time or alarm adjustment functionality. It executes in two steps that is first it load the time value or the alarm value depending upon the value of show underscore t and show underscore a and then increment the hour or the minute digit on every half second pulse depending upon the value of increment r and increment min. Show t is high during time adjustment and show a is high during alarm adjustment. The pulse generator component shall derive 1 minute pulses and half second pulses from the clock. The 1 minute pulse is used to count time and the half second pulse is used for time or alarm adjustment. We can either display the time or the alarm value on the LCD. This is implemented by the display driver. If show underscore t is high, it chooses time underscore data for display. If show underscore A is I and show underscore T is low, it chooses alarm underscore data for display. It generates the output in the form of seven segment encoding for each of the BCD digit of the clock. It also implements the alarm functionality that is if alarm on is high and if time underscore data equals alarm underscore data it will drive sound underscore a high. The LCD display requires a square wave input with technology specific timing. It converts the display segment signals into driving waveforms with correct timing for the specific LCD. It also consists of a flash process to pulse any of the display segments. In the LCD driver supplied, this is used to pulse the colon segment of the display when the alarm is enabled. It also contains a code to strop the LED which is used to indicate that the alarm is sounding. We use every component as it is except for alarm register and display driver. The alarm register needs to read and store four digit data types to display the four digits of the time. And hence set underscore data and alarm underscore data are array of arrays containing four elements where each element represents a single digit of the time. And this array of array data type is declared in the package p underscore alarm underscore types dot phd. Let us code this component. Copy the file alarm underscore reg dot phd to a new file named alarm underscore reg 4 dot phd and rename the entity to alarm underscore reg 4. The alarm underscore reg dot phd operated on single digit of the alarm clock. Here we need to modify the component to handle all four digits of the clock.
as set underscore data and alarm underscore data are array of arrays we change its data type to display underscore 4 which is declared in the alarm underscore types package rest of the code remains the same which basically loads the alarm underscore data with value set underscore data on load underscore a similarly the ddrv.vht component in lab 7 operates on single digit of the alarm clock we need to modify this component to handle all four digits for this we need to modify the data type of set underscore data alarm underscore data time underscore data and display from four bit standard logic vector to an array of array containing four elements each element representing a four bit array which is declared as the enumerated data type display underscore four in p underscore alarm underscore types package. Similarly, the data type of disp underscore seven check changes from seven bit standard logic vector to an array of array containing four elements where each element represent a seven bit encoding. Copy the file ddrv.vht to a new file ddrv4.vht and modify it to handle all four digits. We rename the entity to ddrv4. We change the data type of time underscore data, alarm underscore data, set underscore data and disp underscore 7 sec to the enumerated data type display underscore 4 and disp 7 underscore t which is declared in the alarm types package. The initial code remains the same, which contains the logic to load the display with either time underscore data or alarm underscore data or set underscore data, depending upon the values of show underscore T and show underscore A and logic to sound the alarm when time underscore data equals alarm underscore data provided alarm on is high. We next modify the code to create four instances of the seven segment decoder process to decode each digit of the display using the generate statement. This is to convert the four bit representation of the digit to seven bit encoding, which is used to drive the seven segment display driver p underscore alarm underscore types dot vht contain the declaration for the array of array representing the four digits of the clock and also a type declaration to represent the four digit seven segment data type. It also declares few constants used by the debounce logic. The num underscore debounce underscore cycles denotes to how many cycles the input should be held i. Let us look at the debounce component. Incoming switch will be logic 0 and the debounce signal will be logic 1. The debouncer can be in any of the four states that is wait for press, switch pressed, wait for release and switch released. We declare the enumerated type for the same. We also declare the signal debounce cycle count to count the number of debounce cycles. We also use double buffer switch input to minimize the risk of metastability. In the process switch debounce implements the debounce logic. On reset, we drive the output db underscore switch to zero and reset the count value and initialize the state to wait for press L. While in state wait for pressed, if the input switch is pressed, SW in D2 goes low we initialize the count to zero and make the transition to state pressed. While in state pressed, we drive the output debound switch to high for number of cycles given by num underscore debounce underscore cycles and then make a transition to wait for release. While in state wait for release, SW in D2 will go high if the switch is released and hence we reset the count for use in the next state and makes a transition to state released. 
when in state released we drive the output debound switch to zero for number of clock cycles defined by num debound cycles and then make a transition to wait for press again so this component basically eliminates any glitches and meta stabilities and drives the input pressed and holds the switch pressed or released for few cycles similarly let us look at the component debounce underscore toggle dot vht it is very similar to debounce operation we declare signals for toggle operation we implement the debounce logic in the process toggle we implement the toggle logic whenever debounce switch goes high we toggle the output since we cannot read the outputs in vhtl we do it via the signal sig out i similarly the procedure p underscore disp1 discussed in lab 81 printed out a single digit of the clock into a text file we need to modify this to print out all the four digits of the clock onto a text file and this procedure is called in the test bench allowing us to view all the display digits in the output file we print out four ash characters for every lit segment we need 11 rows and 36 columns to represent four digit of the clock from the diagram we can know that for a given digit which row and which column element should be printed out with ash we declare an output file clock.txt onto which we write these values and declare an enumerated data type t digit array containing 12 elements where each element is made up of 36 characters we initialize this to null the clock time here consists of four elements where each element is made up of a 7 bit encoding we declare a variable x of to know which of the four digit of the clock we are referring to we use a for loop to index through every digit of the clock the x of year refers to which digit of the clock we are working on for each iteration of the for loop we will check which are all the bits to be highlighted and to highlight we print out the ash character at the appropriate array indices say for the first iteration i is equal to 0 so x of is equal to 3 minus 0 minus 0 that is 3 into 9 equal to 27 column 27 to column 36 is for printing digit 4 of the clock if bit 0 of the 0th element of display is high then we need to print the character ash in row 1 and column 30 to 33 similarly if first bit of the 0th element of the display is high then we need to print out ash in row 2 column 34 in row 3 column 34 in row 4 column 34 and row 5 and column 34 and row 5 column 34 elements for next iteration i is equal to 1 hence x of equal to 3 minus 1 2 that is 2 into 9 this will print the ms min of the clock now if the 0th bit of ms min is high then we need to print the ash character in row 1 column 21 to 24 so we assign the string seg to this similarly when if bit 1 of display 1 that is bit 1 of ms min is high then we need to highlight row 2 column 25 row 3 column 25 row 4 column 25 row 5 column 25 of the digit array by printing the sec character ash and so on finally we write out the value of the digit array into the text file by executing the write procedure call 
within a for loop. Let us now create the structural model. Create a file alarm underscore clock dot bht with entity alarm underscore clock along with its port list. B display the output on four digit seven segment LCD display. This has three decimal point MSHRDP, LSHRDP and MSMINDP and also a colon between the hour and minute component of the time. We flash this colon when alarm is set. LCD COM1 and LCD COM2 are the reference clock for driving the LCD. And there are few more control outputs either connected to ground or VCC. We see that we have declared the component D bounds, D bounds toggle, control, pulse generator, time set, time count, alarm reg 4, and DDRV and LCD driver. Declare all the local signals. We declare extra LCD display segment colon all. MSR decimal point, LSR decimal point, and MS min decimal point. We also declare signals LCD in and LCD out, which are the aggregates of the four cross seven segment digits plus the colon and three decimal points. Concatenate show alarm min R and alarm on and assign it to the switch in of the debounce logic. Instantiate a debounce component for each of show alarm minutes and hours push button inputs. We can use a generate statement to instantiate the debounce components. We will need to concatenate the inputs into a vector and then we can use the generate loop variable to index the vector and connect each input to an instantiation. i equal to 0 refers to show alarm and hence assign it to the debounce toggle component. For every other signal, we use the debounce component. We can also use if generate statement to instantiate both types of debounce component in one generate. Also, we can alternatively create individual instantiations. We instantiate all other components and connect them up by declaring any necessary local signals as required. The outputs from the display driver are concatenated together with three decimal points which are set to zero and the alarm on signal into a vector named LCD in. Disassemble the LCD vector for output. The test bench is provided in the file t underscore alarm underscore clock dot vht. It also contains code to extract the display digit from the LCD drive signals. Declare the package p underscore disp4 and alarm underscore types. Declare the entity tb underscore alarm underscore clock. Declare the component alarm underscore clock along with its port list. Declare the local signals. Instantiate the alarm clock component. Generate the clock and apply reset. We declare the signal disp LCD and disp bin representing the four seven bit segment digits. Concatenate the outputs and assign to disp LCD signal. And then we XOR it with LCD underscore COM1 in the for loop to convert the display segment signals into driving waveforms with the correct timing for the specific LCD. Build the four element array of the seven segment encodings and call the procedure disp4 which is declared in the p underscore disp4.vht file to print out the output onto the text file. Convert the seven segment encodings into DCD encodings for better readability. We will use these signals to observe the behavior in the output waveform. 
we also have a process to check the connectivity issues. For this lab, we will check only the basic time counting of the alarm clock. Therefore, the push button inputs are kept at 1 and only the clock and reset are driven with waveforms. In the next lab, we will test the full functionality with a sophisticated script driven test bench. Also, in the file alarm underscore clock dot VHD, we see that we have assigned sound underscore A to LED enable. Hence, when time underscore data equals alarm underscore data, the LED will glow. Let us run the simulation by executing the xrun command along with minus GUI option. Select the top file. Send to waveform window. Here, the clock is generated infinitely and hence we need to specify the time for which the simulation has to be run. It takes 7680 clock cycles to constitute 1 minute. There are 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. Hence, given a 10 nanosecond clock period, it, the simulation has to be run for at least 10 into 7680 into 16 to 24 that is equal to 112 milliseconds. Let us run the simulation by executing the run command in the console window. Depending upon your tool, it takes several minutes to run this simulation. We see that the simulation stops at 112 milliseconds. Let us observe the waveform. Adjust the time scale and zoom options. Observe the increment happen on LS min. On reaching 9, it rolls over to 0, incrementing MS min. We can check the increment happen on MS min. On reaching 5, it rolls over to 0, incrementing LS hour. Similarly, we can see the increment happen on LSR. Similarly, we can see the increment happen on LSR and, and on reaching 9, it rolls over to 0, incrementing the MS hour component. Similarly, we can see MSR component incrementing up to 2 and then rolling back to 0. We finally observe the rollover happen from 2359 to all zeros. This verifies the functionality of the design. We can also see the output in clock.txt file. We see that the time increments. Here we see the rollover happen from 09 to 10, indicating the LS min rollover. Here we can see the rollover happen on both LS min and MS min. Here we see the rollover happen from 11.59 to 12 indicating the midday rollover. So we see the time increment in a linear fashion from 0000 to 23.59. Finally, here we see the time rollover from 23.59 to 0000 indicating the midnight rollover. We could observe this rollover because we ran the simulation for at least 112 milliseconds. You can also run the simulation in the batch mode and verify the output in the clock.txt file. Let us synthesize this design. Set the design variable to alarm underscore clock. Read all the packages and the components along with the design file. Execute the genus command.
click on the dot file send to the schematic pane zoom in order to view the components we see that the alarm clock design consists of time set component time count component alarm registered component etc interconnected to form the final design this completes this lab